hi my people welcome back to my youtube channel in this video you're going to familiarize yourself with the qgis user interface this is a video for a beginner if you want to familiarize yourself with qgis assuming it's your first time using it or maybe sometimes you find yourself that maybe you've used a software so many times but you actually don't know how to go about some things so basically this is a video for you to familiarize yourself with the QGIS user interface so i'm going to start at the top here we can see we have some menus starting with project you can see when you hover around it you can see it's a menu toolbar so when you click on project these are the tools that you can use to deal with with your projects for example if you want to create a new project or you want to save your project in a different name and whenever you want to create your final map you can use this new print layout as i already showed it in my previous videos and for edit you use it to edit features you can see some here you can cut you can copy features things like that and for view if you want to view a new map view you want to pan around the map basically when you want to navigate or you want to do some measurements you want to do some statistics this is use the view menu to do that for the layer menu is where you deal with the layers the first here is the data source manager which you can use when you want to add your data so if you open this data source manager you can see whenever you want to add whatever type of data you're dealing with like you can see right now it's under the delimited text that's specifically for the csv data so if you want to add your csv this is the one that you use if you want to add a vector data you would click on the vector data probably if it's a shape file whatever type of vector data you want to add if it's a raster you would use the raster tool same case if it's a mesh or if it's a geo package and if you are acquiring your data from a database you can use these ones like postgresql if you have data maybe from postgis like for me there was a time i had connected to my my postgis database and if you have a web map service you want to connect to you can use these ones below here basically a data source manager is what you use when you want to import your data to QGIS however there are other ways which I'm going to show you how to add your data to the map so under layer apart from that you can create a new layer you can create a new shape file a job package whatever layer you want to do and again to add your data you can also use the add layer and as you can see we have all the features that i was showing you in the data source manager you can still use this tool here and these other functions here they are all dealing with the layers copying layers things like that if you want to open the attribute table and then under settings you can see like the user profiles where you can navigate to the profile folder for qgis basically where qgis tools they are their files so if i open active profile folder you can see it's leading me to where qgis stores its files so uh the other things under settings include the style manager things like projections and then after that we have the plugins so you know that plugins they are used to extend the functionality of qgis so if you want to install some plugin you would come and say manage and install plugin then it would connect you to the online repository of qgis okay anyway i can see i'm not connected to internet but when you're connected you can see all the plugins that are in the repository but as you can see this i only have 21 because these are the ones that are currently installed in my qgis so under plugins you'd have the list of the plugins that you have installed there 
and then under vector these are the functions or tools that you use dealing with vector data first we have the job processing tools where you can do things like buffer clip so if you want to do maybe some kind of job processing in a data you would just come here to vector geometry tools for things like creating centroids of your data we have the analysis tools the data management tools like if you want to reproject your layer you want to create a spatial index things like that we also have the research tools like selection by location and then we come to raster here again this is what you use when you want to do some analysis on your raster raster data and if you want to do some calculations based on your raster for example when you when you want to calculate something like ndvi and you have to do the raster calculation between two satellite images you would use this and if you want to al align rasters if you want to do georeferencing you would use that analysis on the raster data if you want to calculate things like aspect you want to calculate the slope this is where you do then things to do with projections for the raster basically all the tools that you need for your raster now here this is for database if you've connected your QGIS to a database this is where you can do that for example here you can see i have post raster import and so this is a plugin that i use to import my raster data into into my post uh, database so that's just example anyway so for database you have the db manager which is the database manager so if you're connecting to your database server this is what you would use and then we have web where you want to connect to web like for example this quick map services which is a plugin that you can use to download some base maps so that's an example we also have this which is also another plugin for base maps and we have the processing where we have the processing toolbox which has all the different kinds of tools that QGIS has to operate on spatial data and help is where you can inquire if you have an issue or if you want to know about some kind of tool you can use the help tool so whatever this tool that you are seeing down here these are the tools for different kind of uh, tools they are basically tools the icons representing different tools and the reason they are here it's because they are turned on so if you want to bring some kind of tools for example when you right click somewhere up here just around there you will see you have this list here where we have panels and toolbars so what you are seeing here that the tools for these toolbars for example you can see i have attributes toolbar which is turned on you can see the data source manager is turned on that's why i have tools here for the data source manager so if you turn it off you would see that they disappear now you can see they're not there so to manipulate or to control what you want to have here you just need to turn it on so like the label toolbar it's easy when you have the label toolbar on because whenever you want to do labeling for your data you can just easily do it we, you have the map navigation basically whatever you want in your toolbar there you can just turn it on and off and then under the panels panels you can see we have the browser panel which is on browser panel is this area where we can navigate through our folders in our computers or when you want to access your database this is where so you can see if i want to add data maybe from my folders you can just look for it maybe if i want to add the old towns data i can just drag it to the map 
like that and that's how you can add data to the map easily by just dragging using the browser panel instead of going all the way to layer like i showed before add layer then add vector layer you can just drag it so that's it's good when you have your browser panel turned on so you can just see the data that you have and same case you can see we have down here the layers panel which shows you the layers that are present in the map so if i go back and i right click you will see that the layers panel is on so if i turn it off it will disappear so you can just control what you see in your software by just doing that you can also see i have the processing toolbox here and it's because it's turned on so if i come here you will see it's my processing toolbox panel is on so which is good because whenever I want to search for a particular tool, for for example, if I want to do some splitting, maybe I want to split my vector layer. If I search, I, I get all the tools that have in their descriptions or if they do something to do with splitting, I get it. So it's good when you have the processing toolbox panel on that way you don't have to know exactly where that tool is you can just search for it so basically that's it whenever you want to do some analysis you can search for it or you can see here under the processing toolbox there are different kind of categories there is cartography and when you see cartography that there is like you can create categorized renderer things like that basically anyway you can come and see what which kind of tools are in like if we come here to raster analysis you can see we have the raster calculator raster layer statistics you can zonal statistics you can come to that by expanding this or you can just search here if you like search zonal statistics you'll just find it you can already see it there so basically these are the classes that are classified into different classes depending on what they do you can see for vector analysis we have like the distance matrix we have like the k-means clustering things like that so whatever tool you want to do in QGIS you can just search for it and you'll get it there basically that's how that's the basics of QGIS interface so once you know you're familiar with this it means you can add your data you can do your analysis and whatever kind of analysis you want to do you can just search for it here and if you're not sure what the name of the tool is in QGIS you can just search online and then you'll come back here and once you know the name of that tool you can just search for it and it's easier when you turn on the tools that you need if you know that you are going to do some georeferencing first you need to make sure the georeferencing tool is on and for QGIS you you mostly previously you had to install the plugin for georeferencing so if you're using that version that needs you to install the plugin just make sure you do that yeah basically that's it if you are doing some python programming under qgis you have the python console here so you can just open it and you can do your coding you write your code and then you'll be able to see your results there so basically that's the basic introduction to QGIS and whenever you move around the map you can see the coordinates are changing and the coordinates that's showing us here it's based on the coordinates that we're using on the data so basically that's it that's the basic introduction to the QGIS interface thank you so much for watching this video